Morning everyone, uh, it's a beautiful day here in Ogwell uh, and so we're outside with the Hobbit in the greenhouse and today we're going to show you how to make some tomato and chilli ketchup. So it's from this book Savoury Preserves uh, and we're going to, first job, go and pick some tomatoes from the polytunnel. Oh, so it's about a thousand degrees in the poly tunnel here and you can see I've grown quite a few tomatoes of different uh, types on a cordon basis on these little ring cultures that I made out of some old plastic and so what we're going to do is pick some nice big ripe ones and mainly some plum ones from around the other side That looks to me about half a kilo. What you want is a kilo of tomatoes to make about two or three bottles of ketchup. There's a good one. Here we go, we've got our tomatoes, now we need to go and chop them up. Okay, so we've picked our tomatoes, so the first job is to infuse the vinegar, the cider vinegar that we're going to use uh, in making the ketchup. So you put your pan on and you're going to want 200 millilitres of cider vinegar. And that goes. Now you're going to want to flavour this vinegar, so you want a little bag of various peppercorns, um, little allspice berries and a couple of cloves. The details can be found on the post on the website but you're going to put those in the uh, vinegar and remove them again after you've sort of boiled them up for about two minutes. In they go. So I'll bring that to the boil. So we're going to chop up the tomatoes, the onion and the Bramley apple whilst the vinegar is getting flavoured. You want to just dice these into little chunks. Okay, so the vinegar and the spices have been boiling for about two minutes and it should reduce from the 200 ml to about 130 ml. And when that's happened, you want to take it off. It's probably quite hot. And you take out your little spice bag. And set that to one side. Now you want a heavy pan and we do a nice black or grey enamelled cook pan, cook pot, and that goes. And you get the tomatoes chopped up. And with the tomatoes you're going to add an onion chopped up and an apple chopped up, along with some fresh chilies and some garlic and some, to make it really hot, some chilli powder. These are chilies that I grew last year and ground up into a powder and they're fiery hot. So you can add that to your own taste. And we're going to boil that up until everything's soft and then we'll blend it up, put it back on the heat after we've passed it through a sieve, then we'll add the sugar. So in our salamander cook pot now we've got the kilogram of tomatoes, the large onion, the mm. Bramley apple, some garlic, a chilli that we left the seeds in and the vinegar that we spiced up and reduced down. So we're just going to add in a little bit of the magic chilli powder, that's going to be wickedly fierce. In that goes. Now like I said we're just going to boil that down until it's really soft and we can pass it through a sieve. So we'll pop the lid on. 
<coughs> and let that boil down. So we lit the stove, uh, and to do the, to boil the vinegar, we had it going quite quickly. And we're just going to leave it now, and it will slowly, slowly cook that down. There's no rush. You can go and do some other job while that's doing that. So it's been simmering away nicely for around about half an hour now. Everything's softened down well. So we'll take it up to the house, blitz it up, pass it through a sieve, and then we'll come down uh, and reduce it down with the sugar into its ketchup-y consistency. Uh, so we softened all of the tomatoes, onion, and apple down, and then we, <coughs> excuse me, then we whiz them up with a blender and then pass them through a sieve. So we've got this lovely unctuous, it looks a bit like Heinz tomato soup. But we're gonna bob in the sugar now and dissolve that down. So let's have a close up on the close up on the sugary sugary tomato -y mix. So we've stirred in the sugar and basically that's gotta dissolve in the tomato -y loveliness and then we've got to reduce it down to a thickness of ketchup. So we've fired up the stove a little bit more, put a couple more logs in there, got it gripping a bit, and we'll get that bubbling away and reducing down. So it's important when you choose a stove that obviously you can boil stuff on the top of it. Some stoves may say that, that you can boil stuff, but you can't. On a Hobbit, you certainly can. Obviously, if you choose one of these new cook stoves with a top oven, you're going to sacrifice boiling anything. So I wouldn't go down that route. A stove that you can boil stuff on is obviously a lot more user-friendly cook cooking-wise than one you can't boil anything on. So if you look now, the ketchup's just slowly beginning to bubble up and it'll reduce down to the right thickness. So as it's reducing, you want to make sure you keep occasionally giving it a stir, just so it doesn't catch on the bottom. And it gives you a chance also, while that's thickening, to go and prepare the bottles to sterilise them, etc. that you're going to decant the hot ketchup into. So we'll go and prep those while we're waiting for it to thicken. Always keeping a little eye on it. Okay, so while the ketchup's thickening, we've just got to sterilise the bottles we're going to put it into. And it's a good idea to sterilise the uh, funnel that you're going to put it into the bottles with. So we've got a sterilising tablet, uh, tablet uh, and this goes in four pints of water. It fizzes up. And you're going to submerge your bottles in there. In your funnel. And your caps. Fill those up, sink them, and leave them in the water for around about two or three minutes. And then we'll take them out of there, uh, rinse them out under the tap with cold water, and then they're ready to go. So we've now reduced it down by probably 50%, so it's this lovely unctuous tomato sauce mixture and now we're going to bottle it up so we're going to pour it into a jug and then decant it into our little bottles so the ketchup's now ready to be bottled up so we're just going to add a little bit of seasoning a bit of salt and a few twists of black pepper Give that a quick stir. All this. And we'll need that in a second to, to break out the bowl. That's that there. Beautifully. And we're going to pour this into the jug so we can decant it into the pots.
don't overfill your funnel because it'll obviously splurge everywhere. Now I'm going to freeze a couple of these, so I want to leave a little gap at the top. Ooh, 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 ooh. Maybe not that one. Perfectly judged. <laughs> 